Let's talk about cables, y'all. Hello everyone, Rochelle here, and I'm back to share some yarn goodness with you all today. Okay, so today we are gonna be talking about the Cali Cropped Cable Cardigan, and it is designed by Ashley Lelis. So I made this pattern as a test knit, and I have tested it for Ashley several times. She's a really wonderful designer. So let's talk about the pattern first. All right, so it calls for super bulky weight yarn, which is a lot of fun to work with. And the bust circumference ranges between 28 to 62 inches, which is 71 to 158 centimeters. So, I knit the size three and that was for a 50 inch bust, which was perfect for me. And I got to use big needles, <laughs> big, big knit, uh, knitting needles. So I used a US 13, which is a nine millimeter. And I used a US 15, which is a 10 millimeter. So let's talk about the uh, actual knitting needles that I used. I used my 15 inch Knitter's Pride wooden needles with my 40 inch Knitter's Pride Mindful Swivel Cords. I prefer wooden needles when using bulky or super bulky yarn, but sometimes the metal clinking on such large needles can be a bit much for me. I actually prefer my Tiago needles, um, especially for sizes like uh, US 11 and down. I really like using my Tiago metal needles, but it's something about the big needles. They just, the clinging, the cling cling, like it's super loud. I don't know, I'm sensitive to stuff like that. Um, but anyway, so I used my Knitter's Pride wooden needles and they were fantastic. I do recommend them. In fact, I will leave a link below um, if you wanna check out the Knitter's Pride needles and also the Mindful, um, the Mindful Silver Cord. So I'll leave that in the uh, description box for y'all. Okay, so in terms of ease, it's, um, trying to remember if there was a set amount of ease because when I test knitted it, the ease wasn't listed yet, but I'm gonna leave the Ravelry link below, but it is meant to be oversized. So if you want even more information, I have a Ravelry page for this, and then I will of course link the actual pattern page as well, but it is meant to be oversized. And so typically, okay, so I have a 50 inch bust, but I made the size for the 50 inch um, because I just did not want like a ton of positive ease. I kind of wanted mine to be fitted. So that's why I went with the size three. Okay, so let's talk about the yarn that I used. I used Lion Brand yarn, wool ease, thick and quick. And so I ended up using five balls total. And it was more like four and a half. This is the half that I have left. So it was like four and a half uh, balls of yarn. And so each ball of yarn is six ounces or 170 grams. That's 106 yards or 97 meters. And it is a super bulky number six weight yarn. And it is 80% acrylic and 20% wool. And I really, really like that blend. Um, oh, and the color, the color number is 133. A and the color name is pumpkin, which I feel like is perfect for this. So love this blend. I love when uh, acrylic yarn is blended with something else, especially a wool. I really like that. Okay, so the yarn is a lot of fun to knit with. Um, sometimes the little fuzzies will get stuck in my locks, but I remember uh, when I first got locks, a good friend of mine said, one of the reasons why she got rid of her locks was because her yarn kept getting stuck, but I'm gonna try my best to stick with it. Um, yeah, so every now and then I'll see some orange, like little strings in my hair and I just pull them out. But the yarn is so soft. Oh my gosh, it's so soft. Um, but you know, I have noticed that like, like I wear a lot of black clothing and sometimes like little orange fuzzies will be, um, on my clothing, so it does shed a little bit. That's just something to keep in mind, but you know, it's not enough to bother me. Um, it is so soft, and I really want to do something with this half a skein. 
Um, actually, it's a little bit more than a half a skein because I really didn't have to touch the fifth ball very much. Um, but yeah, it's about a half a skein. But anyway, it is so squishy. It is so wonderful. I love this yarn. Yes, it is beautiful. And especially going into fall, it's perfect. It is perfect. Okay, so I talked about, oh yes, I wanted to tell you how it has worked up. So let's get this thing. All right. So it is worked from the bottom up. And so that's how that's worked. So you're gonna start with the bottom ribbing and you're gonna work up. And um, you work the body. And then of course, you have your two panels and you're gonna work um, the underarms. And then you work your right front and your left front. And of course, the pattern will explain that much more clear than I did. But um, basically, you're gonna work your left and right front separately. And then you do have to seam right here. So you're gonna seam your shoulders together. And then of course, you're gonna pick up sleeves and you're going to do the ribbing for the armhole. And then you're gonna pick up sleeves again and you're going to do the ribbing for the front. So that goes all the way around. So yeah, really like it. Um, and you know, if you need help with this pattern, Ashley has a ton of tutorials that can help you out. Uh, I'm just like admiring it because it's so, so cool. But yeah, really neat. Um, the collar is really cool. I like that. I like the ribbing. And um, it was just like a really enjoyable to do. Okay, so let's talk about some skills that you will need in order to make this pattern. Now, <laughs> I must admit that before I agreed to this test knit, I had no idea that this pattern was fully charted. No idea. I learned that after I had gotten accepted for uh, for the test knit, which was fine, no problem at all. So um, I learned how to read a chart using this pattern. And I always love learning new skills, like it wasn't a problem. But of course, I had to go to a YouTube university to figure out how to uh, read cables. And once I got the hang of it, I understood it a lot better. Um, also, if you're someone that needs a, a good visual, like I mentioned, Ashley um, does have tutorials. Uh, she has tutorials on how to read charts. She has tutorials on how to make cables. This is actually the second garment I've ever made that has cables in it. And it is the first fully charted uh, pattern that I've ever done. So, you know, not too bad for a lot of first, you know, I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. But yeah, she has a lot of great video tutorials uh, to help you out along the way. So as I mentioned, I did not know that it was charted, but in a way, in a way, I'm glad I didn't because I feel like I would have been too intimidated by this pattern if I had known it was charted beforehand because I don't know, I just let knitting intimidate me. I don't know why it's like, with crochet, you know, I can conquer the world, but with knitting, I'm just like a hot mess full of intimidation. <laughs> I don't understand why, I don't know, I just am. But anyway, um, really good tutorials on her website and her YouTube channel. So, as I mentioned, you will also need to know how to use a cable. And when it comes to uh, cables, I really, I think the thing for me is it's like, let's just say, um, I forget what the cable was for this pattern, but I'm gonna make up a number. So maybe it's like a uh, cable six, I don't know. So it's like you have to put six stitches on the cable needle. Sometimes you have to put the cable needle in the front. Sometimes you have to put the cable needle in the back, depending on like left and front, yeah. It was a lot, <laughs> but I feel like now that I have knitted uh, two pieces with cables, I just feel so much more confident. Um, and this pattern was just a joy. And look at these cables. 
Look at that. I love it. So, I will say there were a few things that really, really helped me out with this pattern. First of all, stitch markers. <laughs> stitch markers are a lifesaver. It, I mean, they really, really are. Um, let's see, what else? My stitch markers were super helpful. I had them everywhere. And let me show you all this. So this is a pattern keeper. Now mine is from Knit Picks, but you can get them from anywhere. You can get them from Amazon. I'll leave a link below where you can get them. But basically, looks like this. And it has these magnetic little sticks. And so basically you can read your pattern. And as you, um, as you go up your chart, you can continue to bring them up and it keeps your work in place, especially, you know, if it gets late or maybe you have to go somewhere, you can easily just fold it up. The magnets will keep um, the pattern in place. And another thing I like about it too, with these, uh, with the strap here, you just turn it around and depending on how wide you want it, either you can use the first snap or the second snap. And so then it becomes a way to, you know, look at your pattern. You can mark on it, all that stuff. Um, but like I said, this one is from Knit Picks, but you can also find them on Amazon. Um, yeah, I just happen to really like this one. So yeah, this was really, really important. And actually, um, one thing that really helped me was the actual test group. Like this was a really good test group. And Ashley runs her test group on uh, Instagram. And so one of the testers suggested that you use stitch markers to help you keep up with the count when using the chart. So uh, for example, let's just say, um, I'm making this up, but maybe you have to knit for purl three. So what helped me was, is that I would knit four, place a stitch marker, purl three, place a stitch marker. And that way, when I got back around to the row, I would realize, okay, this, this is what I have to do. The stitches, they change here. That's what really helped me out. It really, uh, kept me in place. And, um, I'm really appreciative that that person brought that up because in the future, if I ever make something that is, um, uh, you know, I believe it was, no, it was, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, something that's knitted flat like this, really helpful when you're uh, using a chart, using those stitch markers. So, I don't know, I'm a novice at this. Maybe you some, maybe some of you veteran uh, experienced knitters don't even have to worry about that. But I know for me, uh, I even use like different color stitch markers to um, help me keep up with the rows. And I have to say, it's really important that you keep up with the rows because I remember one time I was working on a cable. No, I hadn't gotten to the cable yet, but I looked back at my work and I realized that it was really straight. And I was like, shouldn't I have a cable coming up? Sure enough, I don't know how I did it, but like in the previous row, I had skipped past uh, like a cable increase. Cause I think at one point you have to um, like, for example, maybe you have to repeat the cable three times and I only repeated it like two times. And so I had one section that just had straight, uh, rows going up, but of course I just ripped back and corrected it. So yeah, it's really important. Uh, using something like this helps. I also know people use, um, sticky notes. They use highlighters to mark it through. Um, at first I was using a pencil just to mark through the rows, but that kind of got confusing to me. And then I remembered that I had this. <laughs> so I was able to uh, use that and that was super helpful. Okay, so I did steam block this card again and I decided to steam block it instead of wet block it because it uses such thick yarn. And I didn't want the weight of the cardigan to stretch out, um, you know, the steam was wonderful because it really opened up those cable stitches. It opened up the garter stitches between the cable stitches. And I thought it looked really good before blocking. 
And I actually questioned if I wanted to block it or not, because I really liked the way it looked, um, the way it looked, but I decided to go ahead and steam block it. And that was a really good decision. And so even before steam blocking, um, I had this reoccurring problem when it comes to knitting. And that is because I have such a short torso, cropped things look full length on me. And this is a prime example. So this is supposed to be cropped. And um, I know I showed you all a picture of what it looks like on Ashley, the designer. It's supposed to be a cropped uh, cardigan, but I'm going to insert footage a little bit later just trying this on for you all. Um, and just, you'll notice that it's long on me. Not, not like too long, but it's, it stops where like a regular cardigan would stop, like a regular full length cardigan. It's not cropped at all. So, you know, it's okay. I still really like it. I like the length. I like the fit. Um, but it's, you know, <laughs> it's definitely not cropped. So uh, for me, I guess I should just call it the Cali cable cardigan instead of the Cali cropped cable cardigan because uh, it is not cropped on me. So keep that in mind. If you are someone with a short torso and you want that cropped look, maybe you'll have to make some adjustments on how many uh, repeats you do um, or how many rows you do. But you know, I like the link. It's, it's fine. So yeah. Also, another thing is this pattern does not call for buttons, but I don't know what it is. To me, a cardigan is not complete without buttons. How do you all feel? Or do you mind like an open cardigan? Um, I like buttons. <laughs> yeah. So these are, I think, I don't know, they're a little bit thicker or a little bit wider than a one inch, maybe one and a quarter inch buttons and um because this pattern does not call for buttons there are no buttonholes but the great thing is this uh pattern has a loose enough gauge where you can fit a button through just one of the holes so when i am putting this on i just make sure that i line the buttons up i'll usually start at the bottom button and work my way up and just find an opening and button it up so it looks like I have a button band, but technically I do not have a button band, but I made it work and I really like the brown buttons. I was going back and forth. I was like, well, do I want to do snaps? And then I was thinking I could do toggle buttons, which are like those long brown buttons. And I was like, hmm. So I went on Amazon to look for toggle buttons and you have to buy so many. Like I did not need 50 toggle buttons. So that was out of the question. And then I remembered um, in my button jar, I had these buttons and they're perfect. Mm. Now I got fluff, fluff is everywhere. Okay, but yeah, so that's what I did. And you know, I really like it. Um, for me, I like cardigans that can close because you know, as someone with a larger bust, sometimes cardigans can just slide to like your arms. Um, and so having the option to button it up is really good for me. And you know, I wear it open as well, but I like having that option, even from like a warmth point of view, um, having the buttons is a really, really good idea. Okay, so I talked a little bit about uh, seaming up the shoulders. My mattress stitch is not good. Okay. Um, I mean, okay, let's not be negative. My mattress stitch is just fine. It's just my mattress stitch has room for improvement. We're going to say it like that because we're trying to be positive here. Okay. So with the mattress stitch, you want your, um, you want your stitches to line up. So those V stitches with the uh, stockinette, you want those to match up. And mine, they do match up, but truthfully, they're a little off center from each other, just by a very, very little bit, but not enough for me to complain. 
And it's interesting because I've done the mattress stitch before and sometimes my mattress stitch looks amazing. And then other times, not so much. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I did a little bit better. Okay, this one looks good. This one is off-centered. <laughs> okay. One out of three shoulder seams, I, I did a good mattress stitch, but I'm not gonna be hard on myself. Knitting is a hobby that you should enjoy, so I'm not gonna be hard on myself. This pattern was so much fun, and you know, doing it as a fully charted pattern, once I got the hang of it, was a lot of fun. And I was just like, one more row, one more row. I couldn't wait to just go up uh, to the next stitch and it was hard to put down. Some nights it was getting late and I was like, ah, you have to go to bed. But I was just, you know, I was just sitting there, I was knitting and I was like, one more row, one more row, that's it. And then I'm gonna go to bed. Yeah, 30 minutes later, an hour later, I'm still up working on this pattern. But anyway, <laughs> that's the way it goes. Let's talk about the designer. So this was designed by Ashley Lelis and she can be found on YouTube, Ravelry, and Instagram. And I will link all of her information below. She has a really large catalog of patterns. And if you are more of a visual learner, let's just say you don't know how to read patterns. It's not your thing. You never learned how to read patterns. The great thing about Ashley is that she has video tutorials on her patterns. So let's just say you don't know how to read a chart. She has a video tutorial. Um, even on her non-charted patterns, she has uh, video tutorials, you know, because maybe a person doesn't know how to read written patterns. And so I find that to be uh, really helpful and, and really thoughtful. So I really uh, like that. So yeah, check out that description box and everything will be down there. All right. Woo. I had to turn the air condition off to film because it gets like really hot. And this thing right here, y'all, this is heavy. It's getting hot, like even just like putting it on my lap. Whew, super hot. Okay, stay right there. <laughs> but yeah, um, let me know if you all uh, would like to knit this. Um, if you do knit it, what color would you use? Uh, which yarn would you use? I would love to know. But yeah, it's a really fun pattern. And also, 
since it is a cardigan, I am going to uh, submit this for the year of the sweater make along. And I am hosting that with Trish of Tie Dye Diva. And so I'm going to leave her information below, a link to her channel and um, a link to the Ravelry as well, because I am running the Instagram side of things and we are using hashtag year of the sweater make along or year of the sweater M-A-L. So go ahead and use that hashtag and you can tag me if you want. Um, but yeah, go ahead and use that hashtag on Instagram. And if you would prefer to um, participate on Ravelry, we do have a Ravelry group that Trish is running. So I will leave that link below as well. And um, you have plenty of time to join us in this make along because it doesn't end until December 31st. So it's gonna run through the end of the year. And if you'll notice, it is called a make along because you can knit, you can crochet, whatever whatever craft you use to make sweaters, you can do that. And um, of course we are giving away prizes each month uh, for, you know, for joining us. So yeah, that's a lot of fun. And oh yes, yeah, so I wanted to uh, talk about some upcoming videos. So um, let's see, since I passed 9,000 subscribers, I've got to do the Q and A with the yarn husband. And so um, I have finally gotten all the questions up, um, put into a Word doc. And so we're gonna try to film that uh, as soon as possible. Um, we've been like going out of town a whole lot this, this August. So we have to carve out some time to do that video. But anyway, I will let you all know uh, once that video is ready. And also I am going to be doing a crochet roundup. This is going to be something new on the channel, but basically, um, you know, at the end of every month or the start of uh, a new month, I will just be talking about some of my favorite crochet patterns that I have found, preferably new ones. Um, because if you check Ravelry, there are new patterns being uploaded every single day. And it, sometimes it's hard because things get kind of pushed down or whatever. And so uh, I'm gonna go through and see what patterns I can find that I like. And then we'll do like a little crochet pattern roundup. So that'll be a lot of fun. And let's see also, since we're gonna be going into September very soon, I have plans to do a crochet fall video. So basically, all the you know fall plans that I have in terms of crochet. And since I also knit as well, I'm going to do a uh, knitting fall plans video also. So yes, lots of stuff uh, coming up. Let me know what you worked on while watching or did you just chill and relax, you know? Um, and you know, I would love to know what you worked on and you know, cause I can always add new patterns to my ever growing pattern library. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, let me know what you all worked on. And I just wanted to thank you for clicking that notification bell. Um, you know, that way you'll know about any videos coming up in the future on this channel. And yeah, also check out my YouTube community tab. I'm always asking fun questions over there. And some questions are kind of funny. Some questions are a little bit more serious because I think it's important to get to know uh, the opinions of knitters and crocheters, even on, you know, like deeper subjects. So I do ask a lot of questions on my YouTube community tab. And if you would like a bonus video each month, go ahead and click that join button uh, below. And uh, I said that weird, join button. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, click on that uh, if you're interested. And remember that each level has different perks. So definitely make sure you check that out. And also I have a Ravelry wish list if you want to uh, buy me a pattern. Also, you can leave your wish list in the uh, description box or in the comment section and maybe somebody will see your list I want to share. Okay, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bye.